Section 36.3, the Lindemann mechanism for unimolecular reactions. So this reaction is a unimolecular reaction. You have only one reactant, A. The coefficient is 1. Intuitively, we say this might be a first-order reaction. But in the real world, it can be a first-order reaction. It can be a second-order reaction. Why is that? Let's imagine a reaction system that contains gas molecules A. Now, how does a gas molecule A accumulate enough energy to overcome the barrier of this reaction to form P? The answer is via collisions. In the gas phase, all molecules move around. The collisions between two A molecules may involve energy transfer. So in this case, it's possible to have one of these two A's to accumulate enough energy and become A star, the activated A, the energized A, and you can say A with enough energy to overcome the barrier. The other A loses energy. So we're going to just use A for those molecules without enough energy to overcome the barrier. A stars are the A's with enough energy to overcome the reaction barrier. A star may undergo uh, one of the two following reactions. This A star may be converted to the product. Well, because A star has enough energy to overcome the barrier, so naturally we think A star uh, is converted to P. But it's also possible for a collision between A star and another A to take place before this A star is converted to P. So this is another possibility over here. A star collides with another A and pass uh, part of its energy to the other A. Uh, the products are two A's without enough energy to overcome the reaction barrier. So this reaction is the deactivation of A star. This reaction is the activation of A to become A star. So actually, if you are looking at a very simple unimolecular reaction in the gas phase, there are often three elementary steps. The first step, A collide with A to form a energized or activated A star with enough energy to overcome the barrier. And then this A star may lose energy to another A. A star may be converted to P. Again, we have three different elementary steps. Now we <coughs> apply the steady state approximation for a star. A star, again, is energized, it's activated, it's reactive. Therefore, we can apply the steady state approximation for this species. And then we write out the differential equation here. dA star over dt is equal to what? A star is involved in the first step, in the second step, and in the third step. In the first step, A star is produced. This is second order. It's going to be K1 times A times A. So we have this term here. Um, in the second step over here, uh, A star is consumed. So we have a negative sign in front of here. And it's K minus 1 times A star times A. In the third step, A star is also consumed. But this time, it's a first order reaction. The rate is K2 times A star. So we have this expression as how A star changes with time. And we say this is approximately 0. I should uh, use the approximately equal sign here to indicate that uh, this is a approximation. This is steady state approximation. We're assuming the change of A star with time is 0. And now we convert this differential equation, okay, this is complex differential equation, to an algebraic equation by making this steady state approximation. By looking at this algebraic equation, we get the expression of A star. So A star is simply K1 A squared over K minus 1 times A uh, plus this K2. So this is the expression of A star. And now we know how fast P is produced. 
The reaction rate is dP over dt. This is how fast this P is produced. It's K2 times A star, right? And then it's going to be K2 times this expression. The result is here, K1 times K2, A squared over K minus 1A plus K2. Now tell me, is this first order or second order? Neither. Neither. It's neither first order nor second order with respect to A. But, but if the concentration of this A is high enough, this K2 can be negligible, right? So again, if this term is much greater than K2, or if you say A is much greater, much greater than K2 over K minus 1, we can neglect K2, okay? When that's the case, again over here, I neglected K2, and then you are looking at A squared on top, A on the bottom, this becomes a first order reaction. So if you have a lot of A, very concentrated A, it's a first order reaction. Well, what if the concentration of A is very small? Let's say this A is much smaller than K2 over K minus 1. Or you can say this, this term, this K minus 1 times A is much, much smaller than K2. And then this time, we will neglect this K minus 1 times A. All right, we will neglect this term. In this case, now look at this equation. This becomes K1 times A squared. This is a second order reaction. So I want to emphasize this Lindemann mechanism for unimolecular reactions may result in first order or second order, depending on the concentration of A. When we have very high concentration of A, uh, the collisional frequency is very high, so we don't worry about the collisions. So the key step is the second step, and this is uh, first order. That's why we have a first order here. Uh, what if the concentration of A is extremely low? Well, then in that case, uh, this step becomes the rate-limiting step. We really depend on the collisional frequency. And again, a collision involves two parties. You need two A's. So in this case, uh, the limiting step is a second-order uh, step, elementary step. Therefore, when the concentration of A is very low, uh, the Lindemann mechanism is a second-order reaction. Uh, what if you have an intermediate region, the concentration of A is not very high, it's not very low? Well, we then have to use this very complex expression for the reaction rate. Now, we do not have to have pure A in the system. We can have, uh, for example, 0 0.01 molar of A and 10 molar of uh, argon in the system. Uh, why do we need to put argon in the system? Well, one reason is by introducing argon, we can uh, increase uh, the collisions uh, to this A. And that will help this A to get enough energy to overcome the uh, uh, reaction barrier. All right, A does not have to collide with another A this time. A can collide with a argon atom to obtain enough energy to overcome the reaction barrier, right? And also, some, there are some other reasons. Sometimes when the concentration of the reactant is very high, uh, we tend to form some other side products, so we need to have a diluted A. But then, if A is highly diluted, uh, the collisional frequency is very low, and then we'll have very low reaction rate. So, again, by introducing argon or some other uh, inert gas, noble gas, we can increase the uh, collisions experienced by the reactant A. All right, so now we're going to write out the three elementary uh, reaction steps. So this is the first step, A collider with M gets energy here, all right? And also this A star may lose energy to a argon atom or some other uh, medium uh, atom or molecules, right? So, and then form this um, unactivated A. Uh, this A star uh, may also be converted to P. So this is our target reaction. 
Now we're going to apply the steady state approximation for A star. Again, A star is highly reactive. So we write out this differential equation. Uh, it's very difficult to solve this differential equation, but again, by using the steady state approximation, again, I need to use approximately equal sign here, and this uh, indicates uh, this is uh, approximation, all right? And then we have uh, a nice, simple algebraic equation here, which allows us to get the expression of A star. So again, if this is zero, then uh, K1 times A times M is equal to the sum of this two, and A star is the common factor over here, and then A star is simply K1 times A times M over K minus one times M plus K2. So this expression tells us this Lindemann mechanism is neither a first order nor a second order reaction. Uh, this is the reaction rate. It's dP over dt. dP over dt is just K2 times A star. Why K2 times A star? Over here, this is first order. The rate is K2 times A star. All right, and then we plug in the expression of A star. It's right here. We get a fairly complicated expression for the reaction rate. And right here, um, to simplify this expression, uh, we can define this K uni. So this is reaction rate constant for uni molecular reactions. So this K uni is K1 times K2 times M. So this M is in the expression, all right? over k minus 1m plus k2. So this is our k uni. Uh, pay attention here, this k uni is not really a constant. It's not really a constant because it depends on m. It depends on the concentration of the medium gas molecules. Again, it can be argon, helium, or whatever inert molecules that do not take part in the actual reaction. Uh, they only provide energy to the reactant A's for A to overcome the reaction barrier. Now, let's say uh, we have very low concentration of M, the medium, all right? In that case, we can neglect this term, right? And then we have K uni is equal to this guy. It's just K1 times M. Look, this K uni is proportional to the concentration of the uh, medium molecule. At a very high concentration of M, uh, we have uh, this K minus 1 times M much greater than K2. So this time we get rid of K2. Now we have M cancel this M. This K uni in this case is a constant. It's K1 times K2 over K minus 1. So what does that mean? That means in this case, when the concentration of the medium molecules is very high, we are looking at a first order reaction. When the concentration of M is really low, well again, the collisions are the rate limiting step. So this is a second order reaction. The reaction rate depends on the concentration of M and also the concentration of A. All right, so again, this Lindemann mechanism is neither a first order nor a second order reaction. But, you know, when the uh, concentration of the medium molecules is really high, we have a first order reaction. When the concentration of the medium is extremely low, uh, the collisions become the rate limiting step. And again, the collision involves A and M. So it becomes a second order reaction, first order to A, first order to M. Now I'm going to show you a different derivation uh, for this scenario with uh, an extremely high concentration of M. Uh, when the concentration of M is very high, uh, we're going to use the pre-equilibrium approximation here. We're going to write out this equation. 
Uh, this is how fast a star is uh, produced in the first step. This is how fast a star is consumed in the second step. And we neglect the reaction from A star to P. We assume the reaction from A star to P is much smaller than this one or this one. So this is actually the so-called pre-equilibrium approximation. Now, when that's the case, we can write out the expression of the star. A star is simply k1 over k minus 1 times a. And you probably realize that this k1 is supposed to be much smaller than k minus 1 because, you know, a star should be much smaller than a. And now, when we have this expression for a star, the reaction rate is k2 times a star is this. Now we get this first order reaction for this uh, uh, Lindemann mechanism. Again, in summary, uh, when we are looking at a gas phase unimolecular reaction, uh, the kinetic model depends on the total gas pressure. Why? Because uh, all the gases are considered as the medium molecules that uh, potentially provide energy to the reactant A via collisions, via collisions. Uh, when the concentration or pressure of M is extremely low, uh, we have a second order reaction. Or if you choose to use KUni, you know, KUni is here, this is KUni, all right? And uh, when the concentration of M is really low, K uni is proportional to M. So overall, it's going to be a second order reaction. The reaction rate depends on M and A. So again, this is your K uni. At a very high pressure, K uni is independent of pressure. So it's uh, constant right here. Now let me show you some experimental data. So this is a reaction from uh, CH3NC to CH3CN. So, uh, in this reaction, this methyl group uh, shifts from nitrogen to carbon, all right? Uh, assuming we put some medium gas in the reaction system, let's say argon, all right? And we can measure the uh, pressure of argon, all right? So, when the pressure is low, you can see this KUni is proportional to the pressure. It's proportional to the pressure of the medium molecules or the concentration of the medium molecules because, again, uh, PV equals NRT and, you know, uh, N over V is P over RT. N over V is the concentration. So the concentration is P over RT. The concentration is proportional to the pressure. All right? So that means... This KUni is proportional to the concentration of M when the pressure is low, but when the pressure is high, it starts to level off. It becomes roughly a constant, right? Because uh, in this region, it's a first order reaction with respect to A only. In this region, the mechanism is a second order reaction first order with respect to the reactant, also first order with respect to the medium molecules.